Hello everyone, The Network Berg here, and today I'll be showing you how to configure VRRP on a Cisco device. Firstly, what is VRRP? It is an open standard redundancy protocol, which allows us a way to keep connectivity should there be hardware failure on our network. We can configure what we call a floating IP address, which is shared between devices. The IP address will only be live on one piece of equipment at any given time, which we call the master. A slave device will also have the same IP address. However, the IP will be inactive until the master goes down. So let's quickly dive into GNS3 and set up VRRP ourselves. Firstly, let's create a new project. Let's call this project uh, Cisco VRRP. Let's quickly drag a couple of Cisco routers into our topology. Very nice. Let's just call them R1 and R2. Now let's bring a Cisco switch into the topology as well. This will allow us a way to connect our computer as well as routers on a single piece of equipment where they can also be on the same broadcast domain. We've added our switch. I just quickly want to add a computer as well so that we can actually test and see if the VRRP is working. Very nice. This is just a open source uh, version of Firefox, like a little Windows VM that we can run inside GNS3, very useful for troubleshooting. Now let's quickly connect all of our devices. Let's connect the PC to the switch. Let's connect our switch to both of our routers. And let's start all of the equipment in the topology by pressing the start button in GNS3. For interest sake, I'm just going to put on the labels as well so we can see where our equipment is connecting in. Makes it a bit easier sometimes to get a better picture of where everything is connected. All right, so our equipment should be starting up. We won't be doing any configuration on the switch. We will just be assigning some IP address details to the computer, but we will be configuring VRRP on the actual routers. Let's log on to router one and begin setting up the VRRP there. This is the console or the terminal window where we will be doing the configuration on the Cisco device. Obviously this is Cisco iOS. We are just waiting for the device to boot up still. Just remember any equipment that you put on GNS3 will function exactly the same as a real piece of hardware. So this is very useful when we're troubleshooting any type of lab equipment. All right, our router has booted up. What I generally like to do is just uh, see what interfaces we have. You'll see all of the interfaces are currently admin down. So we will have to start these interfaces up. We connected our routers on Ethernet 0 to the switches. Let's just confirm. GI00, GI00. Okay, so this is going to be quite a quick and easy setup. Let's just get back onto the command line. So let's go into the configuration mode. Let's head into the interface that's connecting to the switch. Firstly, let's unshut the port. Now the interface will be live. It will be connected to the network. Let's assign an IP address. I'm going to use um, 192.168.0.2 with the subnet mask of 255.255.255.0, which is a slash 24 network. It's a private network as well, so we don't need to worry about any issues going down the line. Now we have a router with an IP address. We could even ping this IP. It's up, great. Now let's actually get into the VRRP configuration. So for VRRP, we just start with typing VRRP, then the group number. If you do a question mark, you will see it will ask you for a group number. So we can type in one, 
What does VORP need? Well, we are sharing an IP address when we configure VORP. So let's say IP, because that is what we're going to be configuring an IP address for VORP, the floating IP. And we'll make this something that uh, the computer is going to use as a default gateway, which is 192.168.0.1. Another important thing to take note of when you set up VORP is that you generally want to have a slave and a master. And if you run the configuration just like this, both of the devices will have the same priority. So it's best to also just set one of the devices with a higher priority. The higher priority uh, becomes the master. So it's not like routing where your 10 or 1 or distance matters, like the lower distance doesn't mean better here. The bigger your priority, the more likely you are to be the master. So let's do that as well. VRRP1 for the same group. We're going to type in priority. We can tab it just to confirm that it's the, the right command. And we're going to say 200. So VRRP1 priority 200. This will give the router the priority of 200. I want this to be the master. I don't want this to be the slave. We can also see in the debug messages that VRP is actually starting to take place um, and was searching for what's happening. And it, the router decided that it went from being a backup to the master. So the initialization is just where it's searching for uh, any other devices that's participating in VRP. And then at the end, it, it shows that it's the master because it was nothing else or it, it just saw it's the highest priority. That is it actually. Let's uh, write our changes. Show. we can do a show VRP. This will now show us, is the device the master? It will tell us what is the floating IP address. So it means this IP is live on this router since it's the master. What's the MAC address? And there's our priority as well. All these other options, they are useful. You can tweak them as well, but we won't be going out over that. This is just to get VRP going on your network. Now I want us to log on to the second router in our topology. So let's go back into GNS. Let's log into router two. Okay, there we go. There's router two. So this is a different router. Doesn't have any configuration on it either. We're going to do the same uh, principle quickly. Show IP int brief. We see all our ports are shut. We already know 00, zero is going to our switch. So let's go into configuration mode. Let's go into 00. zero. Let's first unshut this. So the port is live, so it's up. Let's give it an IP address as well. 192.168.0.1. One. We can't make it dot .1 because that's the floating IP. We can't make it dot .2 because that's the IP address of the other router. We're going to make this dot three, two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot zero. Very great. So now we have an interface that's up that's also in the same broadcast domain, which means these two routers can also talk to each other, and we can connect to their IP addresses on the interfaces to manage the devices. So that is why we also put these IPs on there. Let's go into the VRRP configuration. We already know what we want to do. VRRP, one, same group. IP, what is our floating IP? 192.168.0.1. We should see the VRRP is uh, searching, checking what it's gonna do. Is it uh, a backup? Is it a master? We'll see in a second what it decides. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be having some issues because the priorities might still be the same. So let's also just set VRRP one priority. Let's make it something lower, dot 100. There we go. That should actually bring the VRRP up. We can quickly see if the VRRP is up by just doing a show VRRP command. All right, great. So VRRP is up. It is configured on GI00 and it is a backup. Okay, this is exactly what we wanted. We see our priorities lower. Uh, we see what the floating IP is, what the virtual Mac is, all that great stuff. So 
Now the fun part comes. We are actually going to test and see if your RP is working. Um, let's do it this way. Log into the VM PC. Before we actually start pinging and all that, let's just configure the IP address on this PC. 192.168.0. Let's make it 50. We can set the gateway to dot one, which is going to be the floating IP address. And we can apply this exit, exit. You could do this with your real computer. You can do it with a Win Windows VM as well. It doesn't matter. Uh, this is just for testing purposes to see that the VRP is actually working. So from this machine now, we're going to ping 192.168.0.1. We're running a continuous ping here and we can see it is responding. This is the floating IP. Remember, uh, neither of the router actually has 0 0.1 configured on an interface. It is configured uh, as a floating IP address on VRP. All right, great. So let's test and see if the VRP actually works. We're going to be shutting down router one where the master is and we'll see what uh, what happens. Let's, let's quickly do that. Let's stop the router. Let's go back on our view. We actually see the ping stop responding. And there they continue again. They're back up. It's working. This means that if router one went down, uh, it would have automatically switched us to router two and our network connectivity would have still remained up. We wouldn't have a lot of downtime there there was a, a brief drop like a couple of seconds of downtime but this is due to the vrp just establishing okay the main router went down i'm going to go from being a backup to being the master we can confirm that by going back into the command line or the console We're on router 2 if we do a show vrp you can see there it is the backup if we do show vrp now it is now the master this is great because now we have actual redundancy on a layer two level should any piece of hardware or link failure occur. I hope this has been informative and that you've learned something. Uh, feel free to link, like, uh, or subscribe to this channel. I will be putting out a lot more content regarding network configurations and firewall configurations and such. I've also got a blog where I post uh, generally a lot of information, which I'll link below as well. There's also a whole section dedicated to installing GNS3 on this blog. So you're welcome to drop by, have a look and maybe learn something new and start labbing your own things. I'd like to thank you again for watching. Goodbye.